everybody, welcome back to Lucy's Corsetry. Today I am in Portsmouth, England, and I'm in the Voller's factory, sitting down with Ian and Corinne de Voller. So thank you so much for allowing me to come into your factory and see how you actually make your corsets. And thank you for sitting down and doing this interview today. You're, You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> so my first question is, um, tell us how you got started. Um, when I was reading about your business, I know that um, Harry and Nellie Voller had started this business in 1899. So what got them first interested in corsets? Uh, well, my great-grandfather, Harry, used to work for a company called Toddle and Dean, which was one of the corsetry um, makers in Portsmouth. Uh, there were many. Uh, around about eight to 9,000 people were employed at that time making corsets. So he was working as a cutter for Toddle and Dean. His nephew was running a very successful company called Twilfit, which were probably the largest corset makers in the UK. And he needed somebody to make their made to measures. Mm -hmm. So he called on his, uh, on his uncle, Harry, and so that's how he got into really uh, sort of working for himself but the work was passed to him by um, by his nephew mm -hmm. uh, and this was a, you know it worked out to be a, a very lucrative and successful little partnership um, and then between the first and second world war um, his nephew was on business coming back from Germany um, and the plane crashed mm -hmm. and unfortunately he died so that sort of ended the sort of the relationship he had with, um, with the major measures because he was wasn't through the back door but that was that was his his point of contact gone mm -hmm. so um, they had to decide what they were going to do um, now Nellie's wife was was the businesswoman and she said well we have all these patterns um, why don't we um, make courses ourselves under our own name and um, we'll open a shop and I can sell them in the shop and um, you can um, you can make them. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's what they did. So that's how really how Volus was, was born. Uh, and it was handed down to, uh, to my grandfather and then it was handed down to my uncle, Derek, um, who ran the business for many years. Um, and uh, yeah, he was, he was fairly successful. Um, he had nobody to hand it on to, so he sort of scaled the business right down. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in 1991, he uh, had a brain tumour and he could no longer work. Um, and we just happened to be, you know, in the right place at the right time. And um, we offered to, to purchase it from him, mm -hmm. uh, which we did. And um, that's how we've grown it since. Wow, so it's gone through many generations. Of yeah. So, um, since your uh, company has been around for so long, I'm sure you've seen uh, corsets sort of wane in popularity through certain decades. So, um, for instance, in the 70s, I'm sure not very many um, young people were wearing corsets. So, how did you adapt during those times? How did you survive You know, when corsets were not so much? Um, well, we weren't really involved until the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and corsetry as we know it today, um, only really started to take off in about 89 um, and that's when Madonna was wearing them as, as an outer right. and so before that they were always really worn as an undergarment um, so she really kicked the whole thing off um, but not in such a big way it really started you know as we know today in about the 90s mm -hmm. um, I remember in, I think it was 93, 94, the editor of Vogue wrote an article on corsets and she said that corsets were, were here to stay. Mm -hmm. That's, it wasn't going to be a sort of a flash in the pan. Um, and we all thought, well, no, because fashions come and go. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think the proof is that it's, it has kept going. Um, and it is, I think, probably more more popular than it's ever been. People have heard more about corsets. I mean, when we first went into it, people used to say, oh, what a funny business you're going into, corsetry, isn't that what your grandmother wears? Um, now they don't 
quite quite set in the same way. It's still kind of niche, but it's it, it's not you know it's not it doesn't quite have the stigma attached that it that it used to. Um, so what my uncle probably did was was made uh, other things. Um, so they made goats, mm. and um, but they also s sold still were selling five what I call court corsets. Um, so the corsets have always been a wanted product, even though they weren't openly out in the press and things. They were still being marketed right. and sold. Um, but girls were also popular at that time. So, and we've got many pictures in these old, old catalogues mm -hmm. of, of the type of girdles that you see. And they were selling the Fico models, those models of girls. Oh, I see. Yeah. So that's how the company survived through the years, through mm -hmm. adapting. But I think every company has to adapt and evolve to the current fashions yeah. and trends. Of course, yeah. So you just you know keep your eye on what's popular and you. you yes. Too. Yeah. Yeah. You can't stand still. No, no business can <laughs> stand still. So obviously you have adapted, you know, the, the types of garments and the corsets that you've made over the years. So uh, do you have any corsets that you can compare then versus now? Um, well, this this is an antique corset over a hundred years old. Um, this is a, a current day version of the of the pattern, mm -hmm. um, as can be seen there. And you still have the detailed multi piping. Mm -hmm. um, so the difference between the, this corset and that one is that this is made by more modern techniques, mm -hmm. and the the spec would be slightly different. This would have a bigger flare mm -hmm. on the bust and the hips than today's figure. All oh, right, that's true. Yeah, and I can see that there's a spoon busk here, but you have the the double wide busk there. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a, it's the heavyweight busk there. Mm -hmm. We can put the spoon in if 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 it's required, mm -hmm. but um, obviously that's that's one that's from stock. But if you did like a spoon, you could have a spoon put in it. Yeah, because most of our orders are cut to order now. Mm -hmm. I can see the difference, and and the length of the torso is a little, seems to be a little bit longer as well. It's a little bit more of a sweetheart up there. Yes, that makes it more um, appealable to today's market, yes. especially if you want to wear it as an outer garment. Yeah, but that's beautiful though that you can still take some inspiration, like with the cording here, and incorporate it into your yes. modern corsets. Well, we have boxes of hundreds of years old patterns that yeah. we have yet to work our way through, so it's like <laughs> a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. So, what do you think about the most recent corset revival in the past few years, especially the waist training trend? Uh, how have you modified your courses, if, if at all, to you know, cater to these new clientele? Um, well, the waist training courses now have more boning in, mm -hmm. so it, it's a stiffer construction around your waist. And if you were that committed to um, achieving the hourglass figure, this corset will give it to you in, in a more efficient way than the standard corset. Although the standard corset is fixed with uh, an average of 10 to 14 steels. It's double that on a waist trainer. I see. And generally the style is shorter, it's just an underbust corset. Mm -hmm. Although we do offer an overbust as a waist trainer with extra steels, but that is a very serious piece of kit. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the reasons, or could possibly be the reason that waist training corsets are sort of more heard of and more popular nowadays than they would have been five or ten years ago. It could be people that have worn corsets for several years mm -hmm. and now just want something a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. um, so they feel that you know they've tried all the corsets, all the standard corsets. They think, oh right, well I, you know, I need something extra. Therefore, waist training ones the one that I need to um, to get into. But people have to be very careful that it's not a substitute for just if you know. I want to lose weight, I want to look great, I'm going to go into a waist training corset and that's going to be the answer to all my problems. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just do it like that, you have to do it in tandem with, you know, it's not a miracle cure, um, you know, you have to do the dieting as well as wearing a corset. So, okay. um, yeah. 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 so you've been in the business now for 25 years and uh, you know, the, the business itself has existed for more than a hundred years, so you have a really long-term view of how uh, cyclical the, you know, fashion, um, fashion eras come and go and all of that. So do you have any idea where the, the whole trend is going to, you know, is going to go in the next few years? Or are you just sort of riding it out? 
I think I think um, corsets are here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are people. Uh, there is a cult of corsetry as well as the fashion side of corsetry, mm -hmm. and because it's such a unique and beautiful garment, and it can adapt to anything for um, to make lovely wedding dresses. It can be an undergarment to make a lovely evening outfit. Um, there's loads for the corset to do yet. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, it's here. The stay is here to stay. <laughs> Tell me a bit about your employees and how the construction process runs more smoothly. Our team, our, a small team, are a, a happy family. They work, they like each other's company, and they come in to work not just because it's work, but because they, uh, they like being with their friends. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think everyone works well together. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone's got a personal interest in the end product. It's not just something yeah. uh, for a pay packet. They're actually interested in the end product. Well, they like it because they make it from start to finish. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have come from underwear factories where they're just doing that much <laughs> on a product that has got 90 parts, and they're mm -hmm. just that. So they never see the garment finished. I see. Um, so what they do with us is they pick up a box of you know, five, say, they work their way through the five courses and then they see it actually finished. Um, and we so, all have an yeah. opinion on it. You know, like that one today, that uh, everyone has an uh, input mm -hmm. and then, you know, you, um, trying to match the suspenders up to them. And then Mary had her input, how she thought it would work. So everybody has a important role to play. I think that's, it. that's important in work, isn't well, it? Well, they can't be in these factories that are churning out thousands of courses. They can't be making the whole garment from start to finish. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be able to get enough food in the factory. They wouldn't make it, get enough food in the factory. So they must be doing it little by little. Mm -hmm. um, so if our girls, of course, every course is completely different. Even the same style is completely different because it's a different machinist making it. So there will be a slight difference. You never find it, but there's, there's got to be a slight difference. Well, it's like that with jeans. You can try two pairs of jeans on the same size, mm -hmm. and one will fit you, and one won't. Well, yeah, because yeah. uh -huh. they measure it all the time, so they're checking the measurements all the time. Mm -hmm. You won't do that in these big factories. Never mm -hmm. enough time. So yeah, it's it's a more of a personal service, and I think because the garment's made from start to finish. That's what they always say in the car industry, isn't it? Is that the really expensive handmade motor cars are made virtually by one team mm. from start to finish. Do you know how many hours it takes to create, say, a single underbus corset in your factory? It's tricky, isn't it? I mean, um, if it's straight through, like the one on the mannequin over there, it's, it's probably about an hour. Wow. Because mm. we have the different processes mm. that go for that the, the machines are geared up to. Mm -hmm. Um, but what does slow it up is if, if some one stitch is not quite right, then it'll be unpicked. Right. Um, yeah. So it well, doesn't include cutting, does it? Yeah. No, but the cutting, to be fair, doesn't take very long. But we're, we're not stacking them up. We're stacking. Them, we're we're cutting them out individually. Yeah. So that is slightly more wasteful than mm -hmm. a standard factory that would stack up a few layers. Yeah. But in the case of uh, say the the or like the dress that you have made for me to review. Oh yes, that's a special one. Longer. That, yeah. that takes up about a day and a half to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so. And all the longer courses that we do that you saw today going through the machines, you know, they take quite special handling because they're up over your shoulders yeah. and they're trying to get it through the machine. So they, they do take much longer, yes. But I'm just about the standard underbus corsets such on the mannequin over there would with, with no other special spec or issues would be about an hour. Wow. It was, you know, what were the four ladies down there? Yes, yeah, there's the lady who cuts, the lady who seams up, seams up the whole product. Then there's the strapping, then there's the binding, um, and then there's the finishing. So it's five, five ladies that passes through. Five yeah. processes, yeah. It seems that, um, you know, if, if one person is out sick, then at least somebody else knows how to do Yes, yes, most, they're, they're multitasking, you know, like all women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favourite part about uh, the corset industry or even corset making? I think because it's unique because it's also a cult as well as something. 
to wear that's fashionable as well as something to wear that can support your back. Um, helps a lot of people with back problems. So it's always rewarding when you fit a customer and they go away smiling mm -hmm. for whatever reason they want the corset. Uh, which is quite unique, I think. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, your least favourite part? Lacing up, I think that's probably <laughs> the most tedious. <laughs> and um, all the corsets go out laced, so um, they're, they're completely finished when they leave the factory. Mm -hmm. And um, lacing up the dresses are particularly time consuming. Mm -hmm. And uh, the full length thread with over 100 eyelets is a task <laughs> and a half, I think. I mean, it, it was a task to get into and out of that dress, I can yes. remember, but um, lacing it up in the first place, I'm sure, must have been tedious. Yes. Um, so, who would you say is your target market, or who do you love to sell to? Well, the target market is wide, you know, from, from 18 to 65, really. Um, they, people buy them for all sorts of different reasons and purposes. And, um, we're lucky to be able to service all those markets. So, as well, of course, as the transgender, mm -hmm. and they enjoy wearing horses as well. It is one of those. It is one of those products. That if you're selling to somebody that perhaps has never worn a corset before, um, never thought about wearing a corset before, and is a bit sort of dubious about it, mm -hmm. um, I think the nicest part is when they actually put it on. Mm -hmm. Is that they realise everything you told them is exactly right. So there is right. no, you know, there is no dispute. It will do exactly what it says it will do. It will you know, nip you in, um, give you support, um, empower the woman. It will do all those things. Suddenly they'll say these these are these are women that are perhaps in their fifties that will then sit down in the corset and they'll say, gosh, I've, I've you know. This is how I'm supposed to sit, or this is mm -hmm. how I'm supposed to walk. And they've, you know, they've, for years, mm -hmm. all their life, they've, they've suddenly realised, crikey, it's like they found, <laughs> they found their ultimate thing that, that, you know, and it does, put, as Karina says, it puts a smile on their face. I mean, I've had buyers that have said, no, I'd never wear a corset, I'd never sell a corset. And they put them on. Mm -hmm. And I always remember some of our retail customers saying that, once a customer's in the corset, it's 99% sold. <laughs> you don't want to take it off. Yeah. So that, I think that's a, that, that's a nice thing about something. You've got a product, mm -hmm. product that works. That's what I find. Um, I'm a little bit sentimental about the corsets because, I mean, so many people say it's so niche, but there are so many people from different walks of life and everything, and they, they can be united <laughs> when they try on a corset, and it really it boosts their... Um, their confidence level, or they, you know, it, it acts as pain relief or posture support, and, and mm. you know. yeah, yeah. It's like getting a gadget, isn't it? That yeah. actually, when you get it and it works, yeah, and it could be something so simple, and you think, God, oh. and you're still kind of amazed that this little gadget actually works. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same for a corset. I think it is. It is. It actually, you know, it does work if it's made properly. The corset will work. No, and it's no, not uncomfortable. Not. It no. should be snug like a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. And you'll wear it in like a pair of shoes so it shapes itself to your body. And you'll forget that you've got it on and you'll end up wanting to lace it tighter because you're so used to mm -hmm. um, the support that it gives. Mm -hmm. So that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much for taking the time, sitting down with me and answering these questions. So is there anything else that you would like to say or anything else that you'd like to say to the audience? Anything to leave us off with? Uh, well, to keep an eye on our website and watch out for all the new lovely shapes and styles coming through with matching oh, skirts and as complete silhouettes. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you for all, all the customs so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. And thank you all for watching. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.